Hi everyone, welcome to Concertini.com. I'm Justin Leopard with a cello lesson video today I'm very excited about. We're gonna be learning how to play Thunderstruck by ACDC, the way that two cellos played it in that really viral video. So, really excited about this lesson. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, some of the parts of this, but I think getting a hang of the basic hocketing on the A string that makes this thing so cool is accessible to anybody, and I use it when I play solos, so a very applicable sort of um, technique to be able to use. So without further ado, let's start having fun with it. So the way that this song is structured is that it starts with this uh, classical piece. I think, it's, uh, I think it's some Baroque piece for cello. They've changed the key um, to just set up this classical uh, air and then it slowly morphs into playing the ACDC theme also in a different key incidentally because I think it's in B in the original one on the, on the B string on the guitar but we have an A string so we do it in that key um, and because it's two cellos they're harmonized and they take turns and then in the production they'll loop that stuff and then they'll play a couple melodies so I'll just go over how to play this introductory section how to play the two parts for the main riff and how to do the melody and that'll be this video. So to start, let's go over what this classical theme is and I'll play it a little bit slowly. Um, so for that part, um, and you can find transcriptions of this, you can find sheet music for it. Um, I will try to link below to one that I found that is mostly, or that's very reasonably priced. So if you're able to follow along on sheet music, great. But we're just gonna talk about, so we're in A minor, so we're gonna start on E, that's the fifth of the key, um, and we're gonna start with an up bow. Do E to the open A, um, and then we're gonna play C, B, A. And then we have to jump up to E, which is uh, first finger, fourth position, or fourth finger, second position and then jump back down. And then we have to jump up to fourth position. And then that's that figure, that whole figure repeats twice and the second time they do a little mordant. So I'll, I'll play once again. Okay, so that's something that you should be able to just follow along with. Uh, let, me, let me play it one time really, really slowly, and then I'll play it at the normal tempo. And then when you're when you're playing this, you just want to try to find the light, nice, um, you know, ritzy character that they were trying to spoof off of classical music, you know, preconceptions in their video. And then the normal classical thing to do, so they do this, is the second phrase uh, is a little quieter. It's a little bit of an echo. That way they're able to come in stronger again with this next phrase, which is a bunch of arpeggios. So the first arpeggio is A7. And I find it easiest to play uh, it up there. Versus um, shifting down. But basically you go A7 to D minor. So extend to get to the C sharp, and then come back up to four. And then this is D minor, F, D, A, F, D. And then it continues with G7. So start fourth finger on the D. Extend, come back up, C major. So that's E, C, G, E, C. Um, so w the whole thing at this point is mm -hmm. 
So this, this part might take some practice, but that's why I wanted to show you what really slow practice can be. Um, you can even do the slow practice in different ways. One thing that can be really nice about slow practice is that instead of changing the nature of the song to be something that it's not, you can, uh, like instead of, instead of slowing it down the way a computer algorithm would slow it down, you can just slow down the space in between the notes. So instead, you don't have to be... Although you certainly could do that, but I would advocate something more like... where you're doing something that's closer to the bow stroke you'll end up doing, shorter bows with a little bit of lift to it. Um, and that, that actually brings me to uh, the main thing about the bow in this piece, which is consistent contact point. You're, no, you're not gonna have any luck playing this if you're sloppy with it. It won't, sound, it won't sound right. You have to choose one contact point and stick to it. And that's gonna be true with the upcoming section as well. So to continue on, we have now our transitionary section um, where it goes from some of the melody from the classical piece to the transition into ACDC. So for this, there's two fingerings you could use and I'm gonna show you the non-thumb position version of it. But if you're to the point where you know thumb position, you can also use thumb position for these, but I'm gonna use an extension. So this is the basic idea, and I think they do it a little differently. So the first time it's a pickup, and then I'm just shifting up to A so that it's a, a, a musical fourth instead of a third, which is what our fingers would normally play. Shifting down a whole step, and then um, one three instead of one two. And then shifting down, and I do one extended two, but it's still the same interval. And then it's one and low two again. And then the second time they do it, they start higher. So the first time it was, the second, the next time, see, so one fewer E. And uh, again, just practice that really, really slowly. Go, go reference the music if you can. Um, I think getting that extension in tune it might actually be the hardest part of this entire thing. Overall, I think this opening itself is actually already quite impressively difficult. So that's probably kudos to them and, and part of why this video was so successful. But now we're finally to the point where we're ready to do the transition where we start really speeding up. Um, uh, and now we finally introduced, we finally turned what were the arpeggios. It's, it's so clever what they did actually, because they go from these arpeggios, uh, they go from arpeggios to some um, almost hockets, where the, the low note is the hocket each time. And then they transform that into a much bigger hocket. So what I mean by hocket is where every other note that you're playing is a consistent note, and in this case, the open A string. So when we start here, we could just practice, and I would recommend this. Uh -oh. Just to get the fingerings and the notes kind of in place, but when you actually play the real thing, uh, every other note here is going to be twice as fast, and every other note's going to be the open A string. And then you get faster. And then we're at the theme. So you play, you play that descending thing four times and you end up at the main ACDC cello theme. Um, <clears throat> so to, to just a quick recap, so it's the intro. And then it goes. And 
And then in this new section um, where, and you heard my little mistake because it's very important to have a very consistent contact point for this, like I was saying. So really try to pick your point. Just keep it very simple with the bow. I got a little too complicated with the bow because that seemed to require more. But then when you finally get to the new section, very, very little bow, economic usage. And you're just shifting up a half set. And you do this twice. And now, fun part. And you'll do that four times. So the way that we do, the way that we conceive of that first, because I think the first time you hear this is like, whoa, whoa, that's so cool, what's going on? So first just start by practicing the melody that isn't the hocket. So it's the A, this is the harmonic. This is a D major scale, basically. A, this is the harmonic, fourth finger on G, third finger on F sharp, first finger on E. Or, sorry, uh, so it's the open A, that's the harmonic, four, three, four, that's G, F sharp, G, and then F sharp, one, uh, F sharp, E, F sharp. So it's, it, the pattern is that you're moving down a note, but then staying on the alternating note. So there's an A, and then G, Shiva. And you just hang out on that D and C sharp. And actually, that's basically it as far as the riff goes, but uh, the way they do it is they do it, uh, they do it harmonized, which is really, really cool, especially because some of their harmonies are just kind of like fun and a little bit twisted. So the main cello part will be playing what I just showed you where it starts on uh, C sharp, which would otherwise be third finger first position, but you'll do one, four. Uh, the second cello part would start a third up from that, so starting on E. And then you'd shift up and do a, an extension to get the F and the A. And then when the first cello part's going, uh, the second cello part has to leap up here, and uh, the notes are C sharp, A sharp, um, A, G, A. And I love it because it has this augmented second in it. And the augmented second is an interval that's used a lot in Eastern music. The reason why it's called an augmented second, it actually sounds the same interval as a minor third. Uh, let me see. That's down an octave. So that fingering is a, is a minor third, and yet the way that it's being treated is that it's being notated um, ideally C sharp and then B flat. Well, C and B are right next to each other, so they're going to be a second. And in this case, the spelling is important because what you're showing is that you are feeling this extra um, distance to the interval. So that's why it's called augmented. Augmented and diminished are kind of opposites the way that major and minor are opposites. They pull at each other. Where um, augmented versus diminished refers to the fifth. Um, so diminished means a flat five and an augmented means a sharp five. And then major minor is that for a third. So major is uh, a larger interval third and minor is a smaller interval third. So to, so to move on, um, you play that for a while and then the cello comes in with this. You could also play it here to try to get a little more grit to it. And that 
one is uh, easy enough. So you start with the A. I play it fourth finger in uh, third, like high third position. So if you're in fourth position, you find third finger A. This is going to be fourth finger A. Or you could do third finger. Uh, and then try to have, um, when you're doing that, try to really get the bow uh, at the frog, uh, really in the string before each stroke. You can even practice not playing, lift up the bow. Not playing, lift up the bow. Because that's going to be kind of the right stroke. And then try to be snake charmer here. And actually, there's another augmented second. And then if you're struggling a little bit with the shifts, but you still want to play this, you could play. But I don't think that's going to quite get you to as good of a music as if you're shifting up to be able to play all in one position and without having to cross strings. So finally, there's the top melody. So, so finally, there's the top melody. And you could also play it down an octave if you're just starting out. Alternatively. So that would be the first position way to do it. And that's maybe the best way to go over what the notes are. So open A. Third finger to the C sharp. And then go down to the D string to play that G before going back up. If you play it high up, you can, and you try to play it like they do, just give a lot of extra wide vibrato to it and bring the bow down closer to the bridge to get ponticello sound. Uh, the way I was just playing it is a little bit more robust. They play it a little bit. Which can also be really fun using the textures of the cello. So that actually about wraps up the major sections of this piece. We have the classical opening, and then we have the transitionary section where it builds speed and momentum into the Thunderstruck riff, uh, and then there's a couple melodies on top of that. I've actually done a cover of this song, uh, not, not quite exactly the way they did it, but in full, a couple minutes long, and you can check that out on my YouTube channel. I'm the Vagabond Cellist. Uh, just put that out recently. Um, so I really appreciate having you guys in this video. I'm just gonna play again in this video so that you can see the connection between everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I'm Justin Leopard with ConcertNudia.com. We really appreciate you guys watching all of our lesson videos, and we hope to see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.